Willkommen zum aktuellen Gold Invest Exklusiv Interview. Wir sprechen heute mit DeGray Mining, mit Executive Chairman Simon Lill. DeGray hat in letzter Zeit einige sehr interessante Neuigkeiten rausgegeben und wir wollen uns mal genauer erläutern lassen, worum es dabei geht. Welcome Simon. Hi Bjorn, how are you? Simon, you recently introduced a new investor to your shareholders register, uh, DGO Gold. Who are they and why did they invest? DGO Gold are one of our neighbors in the Pilbara region. Uh, we've been in discussions with them for a while. Um, they liked our tenement package. They're, they've got a significant number of tenements under application to the east of us. Um, but uh, they were very taken with our uh, 200 kilometers of shear zone, over 200 kilometers of shear zone hosted mineralization that we boast. Uh, they are a group, DGO Gold's really got five pretty savvy investors behind them that uh, have invested in gold stories over a long, long period of time. And they're led by a well-known and well-respected uh, geologist, Ed Eshes. Ed has been uh, led the teams that discovered Plutonic, Bronze Wing, Jundee gold deposits. These are quite famous gold deposits in Australia, as well as doing other activities with Cores Nickel, Uh, he's re more recently been CEO of St. Barbara Mines as well, which has been a success a success story in more recent years. So Ed's a well-known geologist, and I think in part um, their investment in us is uh, giving them an opportunity to actually uh, be part of a very significant exploration program that we now have planned and have underway over the next six to 12 to 18 months. Uh, and just to finish off that, uh, Bjorn, You know, we've got the perfect uh, outcome from them. They invested at what was at the time a premium. We didn't have to any pay any broker commissions for it and they've agreed to escrow their shares for 12 months because as they said to me, they're in this for the long run. They're not here for a very turn. So it was a terrific outcome for us. Sounds like it, sounds like it. Well, the Pilbara Gold story continues to bubble along with ongoing uh, acquisitions of tenements, productive for conglomerates. However, De Grey, as you alluded to, uh, continues to move forward with the Pilbara Gold project based on structural gold. And you recently released some very interesting, uh, very positive uh, drill intersections. Can you tell us about them? Yes, Bjorn. Well, part of our problem has been that uh, everyone wants to understand the conglomerate story and uh, haven't always been that interested in the structural gold. and. Uh, We've been trying to say that we've got some wonderful structural gold here and we've got uh, a wonderful exploration package as well as an existing development package. And uh, the results from uh, Monday, um, they're all below 60 metres in depth. So we deliberately were drilling within an open pit shell rather than looking at depth. The resource that we were drilling, we were doing a bit of infill. It's got 140,000 ounces or thereabouts at uh, 1.2 grams per tonne. So we're in fill and we're also doing some extensional and uh, within, you know, it's a shallow uh, drill horizon, but we've got some terrific hits and uh, just read some of them out for you. Eight metres at 12.1 grams per tonne, 15 metres at 5.3, 12 metres at 7.3 from, and, and all of these, as I say, they're starting from 30 metres or some of them are starting from four metres. So they're, they're excellent shallow hits that, uh, should enhance that resource further, should increase the resource and maybe, maybe increase the grade as well. We won't know that until somebody's done that analysis. There are still outstanding results coming from Berghaus uh, and we've also got the rig going back there to do further drilling as a result of those uh, results. But uh, I think finally those results may have uh, caused a few people to actually start taking some interest in what we're doing structurally. Mm. as a part of only uh, jumping on the conglomerate gold story. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. it certainly sounds like very good results. Um, we'll be looking forward to hear m more. Um, can you tell us a bit, um, you said you're going to do more drilling, so there is, is, the, uh, is, is the mineralization open? Um, where do you see more potential? Yes, well, certainly at Berghaus, uh, we had some extensions that were coming up where we've... Uh, really discovered new loads at Berghaus as well. And as I said, all of these things are open at depth and uh, 70 meters, I mean, if we can get it, uh, an open pit can go a lot deeper than 70 meters. So we'll also be looking at extensions 
at depth rather than necessarily in the first instance three or four hundred meters maybe down 120 to 150 meters which in in our world still not really that uh, deep um and, and that's that's at berg house look apart from that uh, we have also been drilling at uh, Molina, uh, Tarana, and Amanda. Amanda's a resource that hasn't been drilled for uh, since 2004, I would suggest. Back then, it had some very, very high grade sections. It's shown as a resource of 35,000 ounces. Um, we think it's got a lot more potential than that, and uh, we're very uh, interested to see how those results come back as well so it's on the same trend as the uh, as our main pit the Wingina pit it's about uh, 10 kilometers from Wingina and there's a, a series of interesting intersections in between Wingina and uh, Amanda as well but look we've got uh, those results should be forthcoming over the next two to three to four weeks okay so we'll, we'll be looking forward to it um, now the Pilbara Gold project is developing extremely well, um, but you also, as we uh, mentioned, have an interest in uh, the conglomerate gold story. How are you progressing there? And look, we well recognise that uh, we get invited to a lot of uh, conferences at the moment and they want to hear about the conglomerate story because uh, it's, it's almost been mainly a North American story, actually, that the Australian brokers and the Australian fund managers, etc., haven't really picked it up. And now that they've been late to pick it up, I think they're not necessarily believers. Um, the conglomerate story has been led by Novo. And I think the market, the Novo share price has been very, very firm in recent uh, weeks. Uh, it's been underpinned by Kirkland Lake, the major Canadian gold, acquiring $20 million worth of shares recently from uh, another Australian company called Artemis. And the market is certainly awaiting the next Novo results. Uh, the Novo share price would indicate that they're going to be uh, quite good. So that will certainly influence the conglomerate stories in the Pilbara. I will note that there's been recently significant packages of land being picked up by another Canadian company called uh, Payton, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not exactly sure. So that shows uh, the Canadians are still being acquisitive in the area. Um, I noticed that Kairos in the share price, that's another part, uh, participant in our area, went for a significant run. I have no idea why, but that might also be indicative of things. So the conglomerate story is bubbling along still, absolutely. Uh, look, our problem with it is that, not problem's the wrong way to put it, but uh, we are still awaiting heritage clearances. and. Heritage clearances can sound fairly easy, but every now and then there might be a minor issue and you've got to go back and you've got to tidy it up, etc., etc., before you can start getting to work. Uh, we're also waiting on some specialised equipment to get to do what we want to do on our conglomerates. So it's been a bit frustrating for us because we're very, very keen to get in there and hence probably frustrating for our shareholders as well who are awaiting to hear what happens in our areas. So look, uh, you know, with, with the specialised equipment uh, underway, we may not get into it until early July. We've probably been telling the market hopefully June, but it might be a little bit later than that. So uh, we'll keep them informed as to when we might get into it. It will be, uh, we believe that results from it, once we get to work on it, will be fairly quick to come out because we're not necessarily going to go to the detailed analysis that uh, Novo seem to be doing at the moment. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll, we'll be sure to uh, check in and see uh, how you progress there. Um, now, you're basically a gold development company, um, but people often talk about your lithium potential too. Can you tell us where you're at there? Look, it's also interesting in the area, and, and we do have to present ourselves as being a gold development company. We don't, uh, but, you know, we have just recently drilled uh, our lithium deposit, uh, only a couple of diamond holes, so we're trying to get some core so we can uh, learn a lot more about the deposit and the mineralisation, the mineralogy of what we have. We previously announced that our uh, discovery hole, which was 17 metres at 2.55% lithium oxide, did contain spodumene. Um, in the region 
you know, they've, you've got Pilbara Minerals, which are only 40 to 50 kilometres from us. They've made an announcement during the week or made a statement that said that their their first stage is all supply, all sold out of lithium. They're possibly going into a second stage. POSCO of Korea invested a large chunk of money in them. We're aware of other people being active in the lithium world in that region, and we are fielding some calls from people interested in what we're doing. So, uh, look, we, we're still working out what we'll do, but I, I think our project remains interesting, and we'll look forward to seeing what these diamond, uh, diamond core results show. Uh, we've also been going, we've got a pretty decent base metals project too on our tenements and same thing, we're concentrating on gold, but we have had somebody looking at an overall base metals, uh, a review of what we have, reviewing the database, which has been quite comprehensive and reviewing the potential. And we'll probably release something about that to the market because I think we're uh, we're quite pr pleased with the potential. It doesn't change what we're doing into the future, which is uh, is concentrating on gold, but it. Uh, I think it might surprise some people at the, on the potential there as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we've got gold, we've got lithium. Um, what other, other news might uh, people look forward to in the next couple of months and weeks? <laughs> well, look, I mean, we're, we're not going to come up with something different yet again, but it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the news flow is going to be active. We uh, have done quite a lot of drilling in the last couple of months. Um, I mentioned, obviously, uh, the Mount Berghouse results, they've just come out. We're going to have Melina, Taurana, um, uh, Amanda. They will feed into a resource upgrade. Uh, we're at 1.2 million ounces or just over at the moment at uh, 1.6 grams per tonne. We do expect that to increase. How substantially? OK, let's wait until we see that increase. Uh, so there'll be resource upgrades, there'll be metallurgical results coming through. We've been doing a lot of metallurgy behind the scenes as well, which is always important uh and then of course the the big one will still and, and look there'll be bits and pieces there'll be a base metals review there'll be the lithium results but the big one that everyone will be waiting for is i guess novo's results that has impact on us but also uh our conglomerate results sometime maybe sometime in july now well it seems like the story's going to pick up speed again uh we're certainly looking forward to a good news flow and uh thank you for taking the time and telling us about it Okay, thanks very much, Bjorn.